So uh, we were able to uh, get the screw out. It took like three hours, but uh, we, we got it. Um, it was a mixture of a few things. <laughs> um, as you can see, this thing is all scraped up. Um, I ended up using this wire cutter, which I think like kind of served pretty well as like pliers on the head to get, you know, to get some leverage there. Um, but in combination with, you know, the fact that these are like kind of sharp cutters, that plus an actual file I was using to file down. Um, additionally, um, Kurokami props, uh, last night was, uh, got on the, hopped onto the voice call and, um, he had found this, uh, the series of pages from a site called Gen Lab, which he found out was in, uh, I think in London. Um, and so when we were doing this, like at 3 AM Pacific, um, I think it was like the work day, like it was daytime in London. So he like called once it went to voicemail called again and um they picked up and basically explained that like hey just yeah try to just use some rubbing alcohol just just use some some isopropyl alcohol um so i started spraying it on with uh just like this uh 99.9 working my way through trying to apply this out with like the heads of the screw partially um partially flattened and just uh, it took a little while of working it out but we finally did so kind of take a look at this screw that's the screw head at this point And meanwhile, we'd also found out, and I, I ran this, or I, I let this soak in some rubbing alcohol, like some 99.9 .9 last night, but you can kind of see it appears. And, and I think there was also this notion here of what well, we kind of figured it out. I'm not sure, Sinvec, if you stayed for that, but this, this idea that there was some galvanic corrosion because it used like a, a copper washer. And I guess the idea of using two different metals and then it potentially having been sitting in something that was even uh, slightly humid, um, not in a cool, dry area or anything, um, might have just had this like sort of corroded over and fused into one, um, which had gotten stuck between, you know, the screw, the copper washer and the post. Yeah, so um, getting some rubbing alcohol in there as like to work as kind of a, a solvent seemed to be helpful it, along with trying to get like a bunch of torque by flattening out sides of the screw head which I think you and and zero and, and a few others here were discussing um, and just just being able to work that out we finally got it after a little while at least and so that's where uh, that's where we've landed so um, at this point, then there's a few things uh, to sort of do, right? Um, one is we're going to screw this all together. I put the belt on, um, the, the brand new one. And there was actually a difference in the in the belt um, the lengths. Um, I want to I wanna probably go back to my VOD at some point and screenshot that. I think that that would be probably pretty helpful. Um, I think there's part of me that's like, just given all of this, part of me is just kind of wondering like, I feel like I should go back to this seller. Okay, so here's the situation. The seller had assured me that it was working. It wasn't working. I went to go complain about it. I even possibly insulted the seller. The seller then kind of explained like, uh, I took it to a tech near me. Um, he said he did like a belt replacement. Uh, he said that things are just kind of service tuned up at this point. And it kind of, I don't know if this is just like throwing salt in the wound, <laughs> but I'm kind of like, should I go to the seller and just tell him like, hey, like, can you get your money back from that tech? Because I don't know what he did. Like, 
I see that this probably was opened up given that there's like new zip ties along with old zip ties. Like the black ones look new, but I don't know how you can tell like a zip tie is new other than, well, I know which ones are old because it's like, they're like transparent, but like kind of yellowed. The belt, I can't determine whether or not was old. Um, like it kind of looks new, but like nothing wrong with it. EST stream. <laughs> Superior Kimchi, welcome. The belt looks kind of new, like just appearance wise, um, but it, it was way stretched out. It was super stretched out. And even then, like, it's just that like, how the hell would someone three months ago have like removed this? How would someone have removed this screw? It's, it seems impossible. <laughs> so I'm just like, whatever you paid that guy, get your money back, man. <laughs> Like there was also, there's the second belt, the, the miniature belt that I guess is for the counter also isn't even like working or like, it's just kind of like disintegrated and, and sort of, I don't know. It's crazy. Anyways. Okay. So I got to screw this back in. Um, and then I'm going to try to clean out that other belt and figure out what to do there. And then after that, we're going to reassemble this and then just do some testing. I'm hoping that this this whole sequence of, of everything won't take too long, and then we'll probably round out the rest of the stream with a bunch of keyboard tasks, hopefully. Um, but we'll see how this goes. So everybody, welcome and appreciate you being here. I also realized that, okay, so I started this stream pretty early um, because a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to get back to this, but even when I started, like I hit the go live button, um, I accidentally switched to the, the actual camera view <laughs> views that you see here too early. Cause I accidentally knocked a button. So, um, let me, one thing I didn't do in that time was, uh, do some promo on Instagram. So let me go and take a picture of this. Also, I have some laundry running. I probably might need a Put my laundry in the dryer at some point. Okay. Promo complete. Thank you for the uh, the patience here. All right. Uh, small belts only partially left. What a mess. Hopefully you can test it without reinserting uh, the tape transport. You may need to spend some time adjusting torque on the reels and you can't adjust the uptake reel while it's installed. That's that's right. Okay. So I need to, I need to do that. Um, I'll see though. Um, I'll, I'll see how this works out. Okay. Um, all right. Let's, let's just get right into it here. Oh shit. Okay. Hopefully that's good. And I mean, hopefully Oh God, I'm wondering like, what will it take to make sure that if I have to change a belt again, that it's not stupidly challenging. I'm realizing maybe it's just the use of these wire cutters in this way. Use these as pliers. 
um, because I'm realizing like even just like right now unscrewing this is not easy that's eh, okay okay back to it so I got this whole tray of screws and I need to figure out how to get this back over safely. It's warm in here. I'm going to turn on this fan. <laughs> Damn. To have calipers, you can measure the width and thread and get a replacement hex bolt so you can instead use a socket wrench to remove it and not risk stripping it. Um, I do have calipers. Um, this is... Motherfuck. This is true. Um, I could do that. The thing is, I'm not likely to have on hand a replacement screw. <laughs> like, that's. That would be my problem. Also, I'm gonna be totally honest. Like, I've never understood, or I've never known, and this is gonna sound really stupid, I've never known how you would really go and determine or know how to measure a screw. Like, do you go by the inside, like, the, the part that's deeper than the protruding threads? I mean, I recognize this may sound stupid, but I, I really just don't know. I'm totally ignorant of it. Also, separately, just real quick, because I feel like I always want to acknowledge, but shouts out. Hey, uh, thank you to Yuri, FTW, for the follow offline. Huh, that seems stripped. <laughs> that screw right there. Oh, uh oh. Let's check this out. Measuring screw. Okay, I will watch that a little bit later. I mean, I guess I could do that now, I suppose. I'm like, I'm just watching it right now. I see, so there's a thread diameter, then a major diameter. I see, so it's just like the bottom. stuff
Is that even the right screw? Hold up. Seems like it. I think that post is like stripped. I think we're good. All right, we are good there. Okay. Uh, so what is the move? I think there were a bunch of screws that I don't really remember where they came from. <laughs> huh. I think they were from the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna spin this around now and we're gonna try to figure out the situation with that belt. Now, luckily I am smarter today than I was yesterday. So what I'm realizing is that that area where there's all that grossness, I, I think I ought to just clean this out. So right off the bat, there's a bunch of this black shit so I think there's going to be a lot of swabs I'll need to use. messed up the tape transport. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is crazy. Uh, I realize I'm probably not showing what I'm doing here. 
it's just uh, it's hard to like get a really good look. But anyways, I have these like now probably like 20 of these swabs. I'm trying to clean this back area where there was all that weird black gunky shit because I think that black gunky shit is like remnants of a previous belt that's been just kind of like liquefied. It could also be oil. I might be getting rid of like an actual possible necessary oil. I don't know how to be entirely certain of that though. One thing that might be worthwhile is to try to scrub off what's behind this one, just to see if there's a similar black gunk. I don't think so. All right, so let's go back, take a look at some of those photos from GenLab. So here are these uh, photos. So an important thing here is that there's this belt here in this photo that I just don't have. <laughs> um, so that's like a little bit bizarre. Now, there's also this reality, like, I'm not sure 100% if I need this belt. Um, considering that I think this is the BX300 with the version A, um, like, wheel mechanism rather than the gear one. So I'm not 100% sure that I need it. But I wonder if I should still use it. Wasabi, what's going on? I'm allergic to that chill. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely chill. Thank you for being here. We originally found the small belt in the video of the guy with the MR1 and the gear idler as well. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Um, that is all the more reason I had forgotten that, that fact. Hmm. 
meantime, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep cleaning this. Um, I'm hoping that I didn't get rid of some. Uh, some oil that I don't think I or that I might have needed but I guess we could like oil it up anytime Okay, I'm just going to throw it on there. What is this? Also, I realize I'm using that alcohol. I'm just going to be using this rubber cleaner and restorer. Ooh, jeez, I don't think I was supposed to smell that. Holy shit. Ooh, that was like nail polish. Completely unrelated to the stream content, but I'm trying to design a stackable organizer trays for my tool chest and keep all my tools organized and easy to find. Would you make a separate tray for Phillips head and flat head drivers? I'm thinking this makes sense. Um, me personally, I don't have like a whole lot of tools. Um, but with that said, I think it makes sense. Alright, I don't know what I'm even doing anymore, but I'm just gonna pretend like this is all going okay. Okay. Back tension belt. Alright, the question is how? How do I get this on? I guess I would use this tool. I think I need to hook it onto this guy first. Oh yeah, I see remnants of a belt here. A belt that's no longer there. And a belt that is very gooey. Oh boy. All right, <clears throat> I need to go grab a paper towel or something. So yeah, I think. I do think now that that was a belt that like melted. And I think I might need something even thinner than this. I, need, I might need those makeup swabs. So I need to go find those. I'll be back again. these tiny makeup swabs. Uh, 
Oh, you guys can't see this, huh? All right, I'm about to use about like a hundred of these. Found a piece of it yesterday too around the take uptake reel. Looks like it got jammed or something and just disintegrated slash melted from friction. I've seen vacuum cleaner belts that look similar. Ah. Yeah, there's like, there's even more here. Oh shit, I'm still off screen, aren't I? Anyways, that's that's all, I mean, I'm not even done yet, but there's like this other side, so there's two parts, right? Um, uptake, I'm not sure if I'm getting the, the terminology correct here, but so, um, let's see. So this is, this picture is upside down. Um, but this reel on the right of this picture is the one that's on the left. I, I imagine that one's called the supply reel. And then this one is called the uptake reel. If I, I, I think, um, keep me honest. So this picture right here is the supply reel. And then this is to the left of it on the picture. It's right. Cause again, it's upside down. Both of these are where this belt's supposed to be is where like all the gunk is. There's all, there was a lot here, and I've tried cleaning it out just now. There's I'm just discovering there's a bunch here as well. So that is what I'm currently cleaning. Okay, I think I am backwards on which reel is rich. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm still, I don't have all that documentation like up on my screen right now, but I am just trying to clean. But I think we're on the same page. So here's a curious thing, right? I was working on this for six hours yesterday and then we're probably gonna approach, I'm gonna guess on this specifically, I would hope we're not gonna do more than like two hours. That's like eight hours of work. And now I'm realizing like, yeah, paying a tech to do this, I mean like, yeah, you're gonna have to pay them a significant amount because this is, I mean, I'm struggling, you know? They might know what to do, but at the same time, it's, it's not, none of this stuff was easy. Especially like trying to figure out how to get this screw out for three hours. Ridiculous. <laughs> I might use this whole pack just trying to more finely clean this off. It's like ink. It's like the sludgy stuff is like ink. Nope, and there's my uh, 
I think my wash cycle just finished. We're already on 40 minutes? Jeez. Crazy. Time goes so quickly. This dirt's never going to end. Why am I going to use two at a time? is very <laughs> significantly improved. Oh, we're making good progress. It's now going from white to gray instead of white to black. this swap end. All right, I think I'm just going to assume that that's all right. Uh, maybe what I'll do is just dry it off. I'll work to dry it off. Okay, I think it's time. Let me get this on from the smaller one. And then from here is where I think I'll try to figure out a way to stretch this over. Ah, uh, maybe not. Because that has a lot of.
don't want to stretch this out too much if I don't have to. Oh man, it's not that easy to get this belt over. I'm just like worried about snapping it. Because this is basically, it seems like a pretty... Almost like a really brittle rubber band. Not really brittle, but... It's just reminiscent of one. This is annoying. Okay. I think I've done it, but it's totally twisted, which is terrible. Like it's, it's doing that, I don't know, Twizzler thing. Okay, I think it's sort of normalized itself. Oops. Okay. Now one thing I'm noticing in this photo is that the belt itself is kind of like pushed back. And I'm wondering if I have the belt aligned properly on the supply reel. So I'm gonna try to shine a light I'm guessing just off the bat, the answer to that question is no. I don't think I have this aligned properly. Then one thing I wonder is whether or not the uh, the proper alignment could be cause for like the bad stuff that happens.
because I think I see where the belt is supposed to be. And it didn't like land there on the supply reel. This is annoying. It was like I need two of these tools. Did not work. Wonder if I need to remove the belt. Oh, this belt alignment's really hard. Hmm. Oh, I think I got it.
All right. I think we are good. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing that is potentially a pretty big problem is that um, the door swinging mechanism is now kind of messed up. I'm not sure what I've done other than, you know, I know I've opened this up a, a whole lot and kind of have squeezed it a whole lot when trying to screw and unscrew. So this, this speaks to me as a potential problem. If it's this screw that eases the tension. No. Honestly, get a feeling that that screw does nothing. I'm actually not certain what this screw is. So there's a screw on this door. So there's a screw here on this, um, I don't know, it's like part of this like leather or lever thing. I don't know what you would really call this. I don't think this actually does anything. But let me see what happens if I just try to like really tighten it. Try to just stuff this back into place here. See what happens. All right, yeah, this door is opening super slow. I wonder what I did to cause that. Sorry about that. Whoa, sorry about that. 
Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that audio doubled for a second. Did you figure it out? Okay, uh, Mango Head. So, yes, I have replaced both belts at this point. Um, an issue that I am facing right this second, which is a little bit off the screen here, is. Um, hold up. Sorry. Oh, this got really hard. Um, the door now it doesn't slide out so nicely like there's like a, a weird sense of like resistance now with this door coming out you can see it's slowly like the slowest possible pace slowly pop out and i'm not sure what i've done this door is like there's like this i don't know this kind of like sheathed like lubed thingy and I'm not sure did I like knock it in some weird way um, did I wipe some lube off of it yeah it's a little bit weird something out this cable came off I gotta resolder something I think she it how'd you fix the belts um, so we had to get this screw out we took like three hours to figure out how to unscrew one specific plate screw um, which we needed some like, uh, I, basically I tried to ply it out and then also used some isopropyl, like 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol to like use as a solvent. Um, there might have been this, you know, galvanic corrosion between like the post and the screw and a washer, like a metal washer in between. But we were finally able to get that out and then replacing the belt from there was pretty easy. Meanwhile, there's a belt that kind of um, took a little while to find. Um, in terms of like photos of where this was, but we found it and then realized that there was a bunch of like, like, I don't know, look like disintegrated former belt, like in that spot. So I just spent like, you know, the last hour or so cleaning it. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, yeah. Okay. We, we run into a few issues here. One is I apparently have just ripped out this cable. So I think I need to solder this back in. Um, second is this door, this door situation is not so friendly anymore. And I'm not 100% certain as to why. There is something that looks like a screw hole here that I'm not sure where this is, like what is really like, is something supposed to screw into it? So I think I'm kind of missing something. Um, I'm going to go wash my hands because I have all this black stuff on all, like, all over it.
Okay. <laughs> I'm back. And let's see if we can figure this out. I wonder if I can even just go back in my own VOD from yesterday and just start trying to figure stuff out. Okay, see where that purple thing is that I lost. I'm pretty sure I know where that's soldered to. Um, oh, there's there's another shot of it. Um, You can probably get some closer looks here and there. Yeah, uh, the purple one's pretty obvious, I think. Streamception. <laughs> Alex, welcome. Okay, one thing that did happen yesterday was I, I feel like there was a screw that came out or there was a screw at some point that was unscrewed that I didn't know where it came from. So I want to like kind of look for it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay here. And I'm just going to start looking for stuff. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm hoping I can figure it out. Now this right here is the dual capstan assembly. Like, I'm worried that there is a, um, there could potentially be some screw that, that is missed from below to hold something in place.
Let's read this. Uh, and this is hard. The other thing that makes this like not so easy is the fact that this diagram is like pretty messed up. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna press. Let's see if I could try to to handle this. Mm -hmm. for me to just find some random image. Maybe take this as a screenshot. screenshot gets saved too. Alright, found it. Okay, I just, I don't have any editing software on here, so we're gonna like just do this makeshift. up. Okay, that was my flaw. There we go. Okay. So this is now all interconnected properly. Or is supposed to be. Okay. Boy, there are a lot of pieces here, aren't there? Like, should I just drop in more lube? Is that what I need at this point? I'm not sure how this works.
I might just try to drop more lube in there. I, I don't have any other answer. That did not spread like at all. I also don't think that did anything. Okay, so I'm trying to find on the door what and where these levers, what they look like and where they're supposed to be. And it's a little bit confusing. Okay, here's this. I think I'm supposed to be looking at this area. Oh, I'm not showing it. This area right here. Okay, so... I see these three screws. I see this going in through there. Fifty. Okay, I see that. That goes in through there just like that. Nothing unexpected there. But I, I think I'm the most curious about this, this thing. So there's this random, like, flap that has nothing in it. And I think that that's... I don't know why they did that, but that's okay. So I see this. That makes sense. I think. Okay, there's this thing that also does nothing. I think at some point this here might have been used for a zip tie, if I'm recalling that correctly. Yeah, I don't have any great answer. loose 
So this piece right here seems really loose. Like you could wobble it like like this to you could wobble it this way. In here is this sheath. I'm gonna look this up. This is 52, 7, L21, L22. Okay, so 52 is called a pneumatic damper assembly. I think it's L21 and L22. Washer and stopper ring. L22. I mean, yeah, that's all there. Okay, I'm gonna Google this. Pneumatic damper assembly. Like, I don't know, it's weird. It's just like, it's just this weird, I don't know, not, I don't, piston's not the right word, but just this like thing. 49, 50, 51 is this eject sensor holder. Forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one is like skipped over somewhere. The hell is fifty-one? Oh shit. Whoa, who was that? Oh my goodness. Carnacy with a big O ray! That party of three, welcome. How's it going? What you been up to? It me. <laughs> Quapa, welcome. Welcome back, Quapa. How'd everything go today? What were you up to? Mental health stuff going on. I see, I see. Comeback stream. Nice. Well, welcome back. A very short but very stream. Right on. Just hanging out. Hanging out. That's real good. Real good. I am um, looking at this schematic here for a, uh, a tape deck assembly. Uh, it's like a cassette tape deck. And... Um, I had to break this all open to repair something, but now I'm looking at this and it's kind of getting a little bit weird. Like I fixed some stuff and broke some other stuff. I mean, hang out, let people know what's going on with me, but all, besides that, all good. Right on, right on. Well, hope hope it was fun. Hope you, hope you had a good stream and, and again, welcome back. Okay, so this is a scan from like a 30 year old manual and I'm really struggling to find the number 51 in here. I see 49, I see 50, it jumps straight to 52. It's crazy. 
I also, oh, there's 53 and 54, 55, and so on. 51 is just nowhere to be found. Fifty one is called the eject sensor holder. Eject sensor. It's like, where is there a sensor in this? I don't think it's here. Like, I don't think that thing exists. Um, in any case, I think the problem here is this, I, I think it might be this part 52, just unable to like push this out really properly. This was like working pretty well. Whoops. This is working pretty well before, but uh, I've been like kind of manhandling it really crazy. Whoa, what have I done? Ah, okay, I see how one part of this is supposed to work. When this gets pushed up, you should not be able to eject. So that makes sense. However, when it's not pushed up, Something here has gone a little bit astray. This here, a relatively straightforward piece that I think can only really be answered by this, this character right here, which is the 52 in that diagram. Trying to see if I can. There's some lubricant on this. I put some GPL 106 on it. I get this feeling that that's not enough. It's a little bit faster. Maybe it was just running out of lube.
Hold up. Okay. I think we were on the right track with this lube. Just a little bit more I think I might need on this side. some sluggishness as soon as this thing gets off the rail but then after that it becomes like kind of fine pause oh y'all probably can't see it hold up maybe i don't know if this is a better view oh shit it, that can't possibly be a better view because there's nothing there So I'll pause, and then it slowly but surely starts coming out. That part's fast now. Just need the rest of it to be. This thing ends up shifting a bit. There's nothing wrong with this, just why is it so slow? What happens when I remove this screw? this had anything to do with me touching a hot iron to this what is probably a plastic plastic piece
I just brush on a ton of lube around it. It kind of is working how I want it to now. Maybe I did just need a bunch of lube. some lube If I plug this screw back in, oops. So I think one of the issues that I see is this needs to be like kind of propped up so it can like fall out. And I guess it's not really propped up super well. Like it looks like it's supposed to be connected to something, but it's not. That's the bizarre part. Like, was anything supposed to loop around it? Was this where some of the wires were supposed to go?
guess we can go back to the VOD. This was yesterday. I really don't see any wires wires running along this spot near where this is. We were stuck on this for like three hours. Just trying to remove that one screw. But I don't think we ever got a very good view of how this door was supposed to open. I don't think I was showing that very, very closely, unfortunately. So that was really nice, but it's not nice every time. And it's just weird to me how this like has this like fall off period. It's pretty good a lot of the times, but at this stage, but not every time. That comes out really slow. I wonder if putting on the, uh, the actual door makes a big difference. I'm realizing I don't remember where I put the door. Oh, there it is. Oh, maybe that's like the difference is it'll just come off with the weight of the door. So maybe it's not a big deal. Okay. All right, let's just pretend like that wasn't a giant waste of time. Okay. Moving along. Um, I need to re-solder this thing because I guess I tore this cable. I may need some wire stripper just to expose a little bit more. I can't believe I did that. Plug this in. I 
find this wire stripper. try to figure out what the heck to do. Whew. I don't know what gauge wire this is. So I guess I'll just have to guess. So scared of this. I'm going to rest this down here. Fuck, I lost. Ah, that flew off somewhere that it wasn't supposed to. Real nice. Bang up job, Chris. Oh my god, I can't strip this wire. I don't know if this is just like too thin a wire or if I'm just really bad at this. What are you working on? I'm trying to strip this thin wire. By the way, Ada's here, guys. Uh, I ripped this wire out of uh, where it was soldered to, so I need to strip this and then re-solder it. The problem is I can't seem to strip this. I don't know. Failing to do so. Boy, this is sad. <laughs> Okay, I've exposed some wire. Very, very janky, but I've done it. Okay. So, I think I know where this is supposed to be soldered to. I think. 
I suppose I can look for some photos just to be entirely certain. So what I believe is, here's this photo from GenLab. This guy right here, uh, this purple wire, I believe goes to the spot closest to the back. But this is also, I mean, this is really hard um, I'm not sure if this is the notion of a three head, but I'm, I'm guessing so. Also, I can kind of just plainly see where it was ripped off. So <laughs> maybe it's not even that big a deal. Super sloppy. <laughs> I might need a little tiny bit of solder. might have also needed a finer tip. Damn, it's ridiculous. Okay, that's a pretty big glob. Okay, I think that's all good now. <laughs> okay, um, Synvec had a suggestion a little bit earlier that this is hopefully testable before we reassemble. Um, that way I can check whether or not this all like works. Um, But I gotta tell you guys, this is this is like pretty hard to just like manage right now. Oof. So I might have to like reassemble some of it. did this earlier just need to get it fitted down here 
save for you. Almost there. We had a position pretty well yesterday, or I mean, even earlier today. Okay, I think that is it, actually. Alrighty. So... Okay, with that there, we need to figure out what were some of the things I unscrewed in this reverse order. And I think I know some of them. I might try to screw in some of this top panel stuff first. Dang, we're already at the two hour mark. That's nuts. Did not anticipate. I thought this would be like the one hour mark by this point, but we did mess some stuff up as expected. remember which screw went where and none of these are going in mega cleanly or anything either four or five screws on. It's like some of this alignment is like totally bad.
Man, what the heck? There's no way these aren't the right screws. Unless they weren't. What the? Why do they choose so many different threadings? Okay. Now, I guess I will flip this over. Because I also recall there were about three screws here that I needed to consider punching in. I think they were like this. find the hole. go back to the VOD, find out when I started like unclipping the front panel. I think I'm just around that spot. I think there were some screws that I was trying to take off and um, did you win I'm almost there I swear it Aha, uh -huh, okay. Okay, I think I see where these three screws go. Did I any percent it? Almost, almost there. Man, these drivers. Something wrong with. 
with these drivers, man. The hell did I put my iFixit kit? Oh boy, am I stupid? Is the iFixit kit like right in front of me? Because I don't see it. I'm going to open a window. It's pretty warm in here. my iFixit kit. Oh, shit. Found it. Let's see if this is thin enough. Okay, so I think I put in the wrong screws. Okay, unfortunately, I think it, these screws are not right. Fuck! Where'd it go? Shit. There it is. Ah! 
Okay. So there's that, and then I now need to re replace these screws. Right side up. This is getting weird. So I remember I took off the bottom panel and then I took off this extra top thing. Or maybe it was in the opposite order. I'm trying to find out when I did what. When did I figure out there were clips? I had this weird revelation that there were clips. Oh yeah, there it is. So then I started unscrewing this top portion. Okay, and then there was like a front face plate. Everything is really tiny, so I can't really fully tell. The The part that's hard is that there's these screws here in the front that, like, these two must be the screws, but they're really hard. Like, they're really hard to put back in. And I guess I have no choice but to just try. There's a lot of resistance. This one wasn't so bad, I guess. Okay, but now it like doesn't really tighten great. Fantastic. This one's like even more challenging.
It's like stuck now. It's like captive. What have I done? It's like it can't be removed anymore. Ah, fuck! I just poked myself with these super sharp tweezers. This screw is like stripping. Excellent. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to do. The screw system I didn't keep the best possible record of it I guess unless was I totally wrong about this Oh my goodness, this is so terrible. I'm like putting the wrong screws in the wrong holes. Or it feels like it, at least. There's not enough of the screws that I think are the right ones. this point it's like does it even matter so I feel like the job here is done even though it's not even screwed in I don't think there's anything else I can do there okay what happened. 
happen in the very, very beginning of screws. So this is from yesterday. Okay, I guess I can go back and for all the very beginning ones. I could look back at that first guide wherever it was not that this one this was the first guide okay like this yet because there's a whole bunch of stuff I need to do with this flipped over I think is that right no I guess it would be faceplate first All right, I'm just going to I'm going to reassemble this. I'm going to kind of probably for the most part uh, not do the plan where it um test it while it's still disassembled because well a couple of reasons. One, I I mean, first and foremost, I just I kind of want to just check to see do it right everything, all that. Um the next thing is um, I would like to like some of this has to be like put together in order for everything to sort of just like align properly. It's like one of the things I'm noticing. Okay, let me go back to my VOD again because I need to look not at that mark, but it was around the time where I was starting to remove this bottom panel. So there were some screws I moved, or I removed. And unfortunately, I didn't really position this in a place where I can like fully, fully see it. Now I wonder if I do this.
I see. So it is exposed like that. Okay, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So are these the black screws? Shit, I might not have shown it. These right here might have been the black screws that help align this guy. I think, I hope. Oh, I almost lost that one. Okay, that is what I needed, I think. Oh, shit. Oh, no, that stupid purple wire. Oh, what a terrible, terrible thing that has happened here. So this purple wire, which is the one that broke earlier, which I tried to repair, um, it's now like crossing this in a very tight way. Okay, okay, I loosened that up from there. All right. Jeez Louise. Okay. I think we're almost good. Like, I don't have to screw in the bottom. I, I can, it's not that much work. The main one that I wanted to, to handle was the bottom ones that align the, uh, the transport, and then this top one here that's gonna do the same. Um, then there's also this ground wire that I need to reconnect to. Okay, we'll go back to that page. There's too many pages. Got too many tabs. All right. I may have put in the wrong screws, whoops. Oh yeah, those are definitely the wrong screws at the bottom. How's it going? I'm paying full attention. I was measuring and creating footprints for all my screw jars so I can figure out tray sizes and hopefully tray inserts to keep the tool stationary. Oh, no, not a problem at all. Um, I am forgoing your idea of um, trying to test it without assembling it all back together um, and my 
rationale for that is there's a bunch of parts of it that need to like actually be put back together um, for alignment purposes. So I don't want to like really mess with that. Like, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I have no problem with like doing this, you know? So like, I'm okay either way on this. Um, I think like a big thing is um, even if I have to re disassemble this all over again, um, that's that's fine. Like at least like I'll know how to do it, you know, in in both directions. And like I'm okay with that. But I hear you, no worries about not paying attention. I mean, as with today, it's like you get caught up on all these little parts and then you're just like, oh, yeah. Like where I am right now is where I thought it would be like an hour in and we're already at two and a half. So it's like not even a problem. That's true. I was mostly thinking about without a torque meter. Oh shit! I forgot to to update that torque. <laughs> Whoops! That was the step I forgot. Oh boy. Okay, hold up. Let's <laughs> let's go back and read that. I was like, what? Was I forgetting anything? And I guess I was. Okay, hold on. So that was on right here. Pressure adjustment of take up pressure roller. I wonder though, I wonder if this this is really not doable without reopening this back up. Because it say like it, it says specifically like put it in play mode. Which, like, really, like, how do you put something in play mode without this on? And so, I don't know, there, there really was an anticipation that you would plug this in. I mean, I, I maybe, I guess.
Okay. Oh boy. What a what a whole goofy situation here, huh? Damn, I totally forgot about that part. Let me go zoom in really close to that illustration. Okay, so it says, it says here, measure the torque of the take up pressure roller and check whether the torque is in the range of, it would either be 270 to 370. If it's out of range, correct it by changing its installation point of the pressure roller spring. So I want to go back here and find what that really means. Okay. So take up pressure roller, pressure roller spring. So then, maybe you can reach them without removing the cassette transport. Gadget Blue was saying yesterday that the screw to adjust it was underneath the assembly and you had to take the assembly out to get it. Maybe it's only going off this manual, so it's really hard to see. Well, one of the things that I'm wondering is, what if all you need to do, not necessarily was to take the transport out, but to take the bottom out? Because um, uh, taking off the bottom plate can kind of expose the bottom of this, like the, the direct bottom. I'm not sure if it exposes the the bottom of the front like enough. Um, if, if that's where the, that's where the adjustment needs to be made. It says refer to 3.6 and it's just like, I'm just looking at this, but it doesn't say where the installation point of the pressure roller spring is. Now, um, one way that we can find that out is just like try to locate this by by number because I think it would be around this 32 L23 thing 32 head base spring L23 is a this is a screw <laughs> all right L13 and 2728. L13 is probably just yeah, it's an E-ring. 27 and 28. Ah, 28. Okay, so 28 is this guy. Damn it. Like I can, I can kind of see what it's pointing to, but then like I literally just closed the back, <laughs> so I'm missing like every angle. A flash of light. So I want to reread that. So I think it said it's 27 and 28. That's the assembly and the spring. I'm going to scroll all the way back up to that thing. Changing the installation point of the pressure roller spring. So that would be 28. Where's the installation? I wonder what that means, though. It says, correct it by changing the installation point. Like, I, 
at first that seemed obvious, but then I'm realizing that's that's not obvious wording. Um, let me know what you think because the the words changing the installation point does that mean like screw it in for more or less torque, or does changing the installation point mean like physically moving? like a piece like that's and like it's just stupid because I, I literally just threw this all back in here <laughs> I'm guessing there are multiple notches to hook the loop of the spring over that so that it gets more taut yeah okay so um it's funny because I'm pretty sure I see this spring. 28 is the spring. And I'm pretty sure that I can like just see this with my eyes. Um, okay, hold on. Let me try to remove this plate again because it's like I'm really just like blocking everything out of like good view. I see where this spring, this spring hooks onto some point, I think here. Or there's a plate, uh, forgive me. Um, it might be, it's, what the fuck? Okay, so you know what's weird? What I find weird here is um, this guy doesn't look like this. This is like, okay, if I, if I zoom in a lot, maybe I should go on this one. I'm glad you don't see it with your nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, it, it's almost like, I don't know if this is like an MR1A versus MR1B issue, but this plate, um, as it's sort of like, like this, this whole plate, uh, plate portion here, this part is, is shown here in this diagram as like horizontal. So like, it's like, it's like this, if you look at my face cam, it's like this. But when I look at it here, it's vertical. So like it hooks in like side to side. And that's, I think that's what the screen or the spring is like where that is. Now, if that's the case, then either way, even if it's horizontal or vertical, if it's, if this is where it's connecting to, um, there's no adjustment point for that. So I think the adjustment point might be referring to something at the bottom. Now, let me take another look with my phone and light here. Like even down there, I really don't see anything that you could adjust this, like what it, what it means. I really don't know if I understand. I really don't know what, what the words mean when it says, Like the wor the words are nonsense here. Uh, yeah. Correct it by changing the installation point of the pressure roller spring. Let me look at this diagram again. Yeah, man, I don't know. This is like nonsense. Are there multiple mounting points in the uptake roller arm thingy? 
No. <laughs> the answer to that is no. If I'm looking at the right thing, hold on. Here's the other weird thing. This is, this is, um, okay. I'm gonna screenshot this because like quite literally, this diagram is upside down. That, and that, that first of all annoys me. So, um, okay, it more looks like this. It's not even upside down, I guess it's nine degrees. It's like 90-ish degrees, because it's, it's like none of this is actually the real orientation. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is goofy. Okay, so if I'm looking at that like that, Okay, here's the, here's the thing. This is all nonsense. I, I don't think that, I, I think this is actually an issue with, um, with, th there's an inconsistency here. Um, this might be some situation where it's like MR1A or MR1B because there's no like, this looks like a double spring and that's not what this is like at all okay one thing uh... holy shit wait let me think about this is is this one long spring that's like there's a hook on there's a, think of one spring with like hooks on the end like they look like like this is this one long spring that's hooked all the way here and then hook comes down and hooks into this second hole because it looks like there's two holes there and that's that isn't even how this like looks there's only one hole in, at this part of the um the assembly yeah this is like not even this is not even an accurate diagram nor even if it were uh <laughs> these instructions instructions are unclear <laughs> but yeah there's there's there isn't multiple mounting points, no. So I'm just going to assume there's nothing to be done there. <laughs> I mean... Let's just assume that. Okay, so I'm going to screw in these last screws for the faceplate where the um, the tape transport is. And then after that, one thing I can do at this point is I, I could probably test from here without closing the top. That way I don't have to close the top. Fuck! Ah, oh, I lost that stupid ass screw. Where'd it go? Hmm. Okay, I lost one screw. It's it's floating around in there. Let me see if I can try to screw at least one other one in here. <clears throat> and uh, maybe I'll lose this one too. Okay, 
That one is successfully in. All right. Got to find this other screw. However long that'll take. I see it. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually right there. OK, I got it. And then I have to hope I don't lose this again. Fuck me, I just did. OK. Oh, so terrible. All right, should I use tweezers to get it in the right spot? I feel like it's, none of this is good. Uh, <laughs> okay. Got it in. Okay. So. I think we can test now. What does testing entail? I would just hope here that um, the counter works properly. Um, hold on, let me look at a few things here in the back. The counter works properly and we can play for more than nine minutes is what I'm just hoping. So I need to plug this in, uh, plug the I need to plug the line ins. Um, I actually I feel like I don't really even need to do that. Um, what could I plug in? Oh. I know exactly what I need to plug in. And this is funny because I very specifically ordered a very, very, very short cable um, because everything is so close together. But since I'm like moved all the way out, I need a long cable, the one that I originally, re originally replaced. Yeah. Okay, so I have like an extra long cable right here. So we're going to use this for testing. So then I need to plug this in. And at this stage, I think we should all be safe. The, the ground wires are put back in. Everything is it's just exposed from the top. But like that's the only thing I need to screw in at this point is just the top. Right off the bat, <laughs> there's something seemingly kind of wrong here, which is that it powered on. And this power button is not really working. 
I'm gonna unplug it. <laughs> Cause it, it immediately powered on and the power button doesn't actually like click. So I don't know if I've misaligned something. This is weird. This power button is like kind of sticking. All right, I'm realizing the ISO is really low. Boy, what the hell have I done with this power button? Is it not supposed to be screwed in this tight? I actually honestly think it's like just misaligned because I'm realizing like uh, you can kind of pull it out. So I might have just, <laughs> I might have just screwed this on badly. God dang. Okay. Uh, guess we'll unplug all of it. Okay, that was uh, immediately stupid. Okay, I'm going to get more comfortable with this, so I pull this off, and then I think we're okay down here. Um, what's next? It's really just this. Pull these, but then on the top... We just we gotta we gotta unscrew these, and this might be it. And then there we could just take off the clips. Oh, I realize also I'm not 100% sure that the macro is still useful at this point. It might be, but I don't think so.
Okay. Face plate is off. Okay, I think I've just like screwed this on badly. Try this again. Do I even need to put the back plate on or the bottom plate? I mean, maybe at this point, I don't need to. Okay, I'm gonna plug this stuff back in then without the bottom plate. Oops. Okay, so let's uh, let's try this shit out, guys. Are you guys ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pull the tape out. Let's do. Uh, we we're doing this last time. Stan gets. Always ready. Alrighty. Here goes nothing. the bat I can't rewind okay it took like three tries but I can finally rewind okay it rewound let me eject 
All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands so you guys can see what's going on. Now I change the lights. Realize that that sequence, that logical sequence, didn't make a whole lot of sense. But I washed my hands so I can change the lens, and then you guys can see what, what's going on. Okay, here we are. So, this is rewound. I'm going to reset and uh, I'll turn off the music and I'll hit play. All right, immediately stopped. Okay, so this is one thing that went wrong kind of last time here. So unfortunately, let's see what we can do. Hmm. What did we do last time in order to get this to work? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> this was a uh, a state of failure that we were experiencing a long while back, which turning the spindle. I look sad. Turning the spindle would mess with the counter. But then it would also get it to a state where it would work. Let me check something in this manual. Take a look at this together because I'm realizing well this is the first time we've had like a, a pretty good view um, in a while um, of what's going on when it's actually playing Maybe 
Let's pull it back a little bit. Okay. I don't know how far, okay, uh, maybe like this. Maybe? I wish it was wider, but it's okay. All right, so, um, or that there was more picture. So that does nothing. When I hit play, it rewinds itself back a bit and then it decides it doesn't want to go. And if we keep doing this for a while, I think the tape is supposed to spill out. Yeah, it already has. So. Oh shit, wait, what is happening inside of here? Oh, there was like some craziness in there. I don't know if it's, is there something strange going on with the tape? The uptake reel's not doing anything? It's not, but I'm, I'm looking at this tape and I'm feeling like there's... The tape might be messed up and I'm not sure if it was just like this. Um, or if maybe um, this was caused by everything that we've just seen so far. But there's, there's actually something really weird happening with the tape. I kind of want to grab another tape because I, I don't know if I've messed this up somehow. Let me just let me just find a tape that we know is not <laughs> in a horrible condition. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's Keith Sweat. We've had a Keith Sweat request. A little while ago. I used to do this one. Yeah, the thing is, I don't have any number two pencils like here. I think I probably have some in that drawer behind me, but um, never the mind. All right. Okay. So it's right now refusing to rewind <laughs> three times. This this happened with the uh, this. Uh, Stan gets one too, but we're rewinding. We watched it rewind. Well, strangely enough, it rewound, but I don't think it rewound all the way. Did it? I think it did. Okay, this is playing. It played for five seconds. <laughs> so why only five seconds? Okay, something weird is happening in there each time. Uh, this like layer of tape ends up like I, I don't know if you could see it it's like I, I need like a polarizer for this both reels it, it, they were 
But you can see that there's there's something weird happening with the tape, and I wonder if it's something that I did. Okay, so it it's it slipped. Yeah, the, the uptake reel is not taking the tape. Uh, or like this this side right here wasn't wasn't taking the tape. And I'm like, what did I do? Oh, you know one thing I haven't done was do the, the roller cleaning or whatever. I wonder if that's like a thing I need to do, right? Because I realize I haven't done that yet. Um one second. Get this sorted out. Let's go back to that that one video we saw. Is that very first like Nakamichi MR1? The quote unquote uh, interior service. Oh, what's up with this one? This is like a another one of those Italian videos. If there's any information here. I don't think this guy ever opens it up. Okay, um, this one right here, he does this thing at some point where he starts doing that. Okay, uh, let me flash a light. So this guy is cleaning. So let me grab these swabs. So are they just constantly spinning? counter is going like super fast why is that going so fast <laughs> I think there's a pitch control thing that I was supposed to make an adjustment to but in any case um, what is this guy What does this guy mention? He, he doesn't mention what to use, but also have it on mute. So this guy doesn't mention anything. Great. All right. Okay, so the first thing I immediately notice is that everything is going like hyper fast. Oh, I realized I wasn't showing you guys any of this. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, mine is like going, I think, way faster than that. 
Like his is going fast, mine's going even faster. So we'll go on to continue cleaning that part. What else? Just kind of around there, okay. Okay, let me go and try to clean these parts. Cooking dinner, be back in a big and alert. All right. No problem. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot of dirt. Let me try these smaller pink ones. Meet Xenoblade before you fix this thing? Probably. Sorry about that. I'm almost out of these long medical swabs. Oh shit, sorry. Didn't have this even pointed the right way remotely. Oh shit. Oh fuck, it got stuck. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna stop this. We're gonna reset. Now, why is this moving so quickly? I think there is a pitch control uh, instruction here somewhere. Tape speed adjustment. Adjust VR101 on the motor PCB assembly.
Ah, okay. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, so there is a curve. So it says that there is like this thing here to to adjust. But I don't think I actually see it. Okay, everything is stopped. Okay. Let's take a look at this. It says that there's a thing to adjust on the PCB but I see no such thing. Yeah, there's like nothing there. Am I crazy? What the hell? I think this might be another one of those things where it's like Is this um, like a difference between MR1A and MR1B? There's this chance here that what I'm looking at is that mechanism is on the, um, holy shit, it's on the side, like it's on the inside of the PCB. Fuck. Okay. So I need to figure out how to turn that to decrease the speed. because it is going hyper fast. But I have to do this. I have to do this assembled. Like, I think I see that piece. It's just crazy. Like, this is actually nuts. It's like... Whatever happened here is like there's a revision or something that made them believe it was a good idea to put this on the inside. This would have been my best bet if this was way smaller. 
How do I... This thing here is, is facing inwards instead of outwards. So I just, I can't get to it. It's crazy. I could take the whole tape assembly off again and then, or the, the whole tape transport off and then try to like deal with it. No, well, it's removed. I just wished I had known this from before. One thing I wonder is, is it moving so fast that it's causing like the tapes to go like just ape shit? is crazy actually crazy I'm gonna look at that diagram or just look at the VOD again to see what that looked like from yesterday. So it's this, I think it's this guy, which I to this point don't have a good view of. There. It's this. Apparently I need to turn this clockwise. But like reaching that, it seems almost impossible. Hold on. What if I flip it? What the hell happened here? So I've now flipped it over on its side. I'm thinking maybe there's like some weird way I can sort of access it and turn it. Man, this is lame. Why did they put that in that position? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to like get that without taking everything out. Hmm. 
I didn't even screw some of this in all the way. Whoops. Could that be a reason why? No, there's no way. I wonder what the likelihood of this would be of like flipping it over. Like what if I did take this entirely apart and then desoldered that? No, because it has to be in that orientation. Impossible, man. Impossible. looking at there's the curve so what I'm looking at here is This is like, as I'm like looking down on it, it's like this side is up. And so there's this, this point right here that should allow us to, to sort of turn this, I think. But it's weird. I'm not fully certain how this is supposed to work. I mean, honestly, I guess the only way is like I gotta take this all apart again. So I don't know the better way of deal with him, dealing with this. Yeah, man, this is crazy.
It's like, I can't believe that, that, like, they don't make that accessible. Like, this is, the, the diagram is real goofy. Hold on, I'm going to look at pitch. No, that might be the only place where it is, huh? VR Trying to look for the motor PCB. Dang, there's a lot of PCBs. Counter PCB. I guess I could just kind of tell by its shape, right? Fuse PCB assembly. Main PCB. Shut off, power switch, tape LED, MPX filter, input balance amp, input balance amp B A and B, unbalanced input, output balanced, unbalanced output, external meter. Where the hell is the, the motor PCB? This is not even here. I don't want to give any information on that. I mean, maybe it's because the motor PCB is part of the Sankayo, uh, like dual drive capstan. That's probably it. But that's kind of fucked, though. Alright, Nakamichi MR1 VR11. must include VR 101.
I mean, I guess the only way, I, I, I think I just have to open it. Well, I guess we'll just have to do it. Four hours, all right, well, we'll cap this again. The madness, it never ends. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, the belt's changed, you know? Like, I've, I've been able to adjust these belts. Um, What's happening right now is that it's playing so fast and I'm wondering if it's like the way that you adjust the the tape control I mean it's like I'm not sure if I know if I knocked something um, when I was just adjusting everything but it's playing so fast that I'm thinking that that might be the cause of like some of the issues that we're seeing where it's still kind of messing with the tape is it the usual I can't put it back? Well, no, no, no. I mean, I can, I can throw all this back together. Um, let me see here. Uh, I'm wondering just like, cause it's such a pain to get this, um, to get this whole assembly out of here. Like I'm wondering like the real necessity of having to take all these screws out, you know? Um, because it's just, it, there's a lot to do and it's like, there, there are points where I'm like, okay, where do I stop? Um, and the reason why I find that like to be a thing is that like, at some point it's like, there's so many wires that just kind of get in the way that like, how deep do you have to go? Versus if I don't do enough, like trying to take the tape transport out, um, it's like I'm at risk of like just cracking the whole front of the plastic so here like I, I'm now like able to move this like in and out right but presumably presumably not by enough
think this was the side that I mean like I can I can kind of get this out if I unscrewed everything on this side which I mean I guess I just should the the part that was just rough to deal with on this side was that like you have to align the power button like really accurately um, or else um, it's gonna stick and I mean it's just like I can be just a little bit more mindful of that moving forward but kind of an annoying thing to deal with, you know? On top of that, like, I don't think these screws are like the right screws. I'm not sure if I use the wrong screws or just the way that they put it together was um, not ideal in, in my eyes. Okay. All right. Tape transport's out. I think almost. Shit. Uh, I need to get this ground. This ground's causing some issues. boy. I wonder if the belt is now equally as loose. Why is it stuck?
Huh. Why am I just having a crazy amount of trouble right now lifting this off? There we go. <sighs> okay. So, I got it out. Now, the thing I want to do is... Oh. Uh, yeah, I can't see it because of the macro. Um, I took out the macro, so... I see this thing here and I need to turn this apparently. And I have no idea by how much. And I really just can't believe that this is built this way. This is kind of ridiculous. So one thing I'm wondering is whether or not I can desolder it and then turn it on this side. The problem with that is it's kind of like a bold move. It's kind of really bold. Um, because... Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if uh, this is now the stage where I'm just like... Should I try just using this now without it assembled? Like the original, the original Synvex suggestion. I think I might try it. Oh shit, I need to put that ground in though. Okay, grounding wires in. Okay, so the key here is what? Um, I'm going to plug in. counter is moving stupid fast still.
Why is nothing moving except this front? Oh, is it because the motor? Oh, shit. This is fucking wild, dude. This is like unbelievable. <laughs> Holy shit. So, this motor has to be sitting on these like coiled copper wires in order for it to move. Which then in turn means that like I have to screw and unscrew this like every time. Oh, Sinvik, sorry. Uh, you had the suggestion of um, testing this while it's all disassembled. And that's what I was referring to. No. The problem with everything is that it's just moving so fast. And I feel like it's moving so fast, which is what's causing all these problems. And why it moves so fast and how to adjust it is like hugely like up in question here. I'm now wondering, is it moving fast because of the belt? There's no way that's the case, right? It's like, is the exact thing I changed what the problem is? Okay, so real quick, what I wanted to show Sinvec was 
it's going so fast and there's this tape speed adjustment um, uh, instruction here and one problem is that like you can't access this um, this VR 101 thing um, without disassembling everything. Um, the way that it's diagrammed out is not how it actually is. That thing that you're supposed to turn with a screwdriver is actually facing inwards. And like you need the tape transport completely outside in order to, to actually turn that piece. And so I've done that and any which way I turn it, it's still just going mega fast. So how the hell do you slow it down? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, damn. What the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Something, okay. There's this piece here. So this, this is what we're looking at. Uh, yeah, so there it is. That's, that's what that is. And so it says, adjust this. this. I guess this thing is called VR 101. And adjust this by turning it clockwise to decrease the motor speed. And I did as far as I could and like it's still going like way too fast like I don't know like 2x 3x speed and the thing was it wasn't even doing this before I changed the belt so I'm left to wonder is this like a belt problem Is this a problem with the VR 101? Is this a problem with the motor? And I mean, even more is just like, how does a motor work and what is the problem here?
How do motors work? I'm going to Google this. Uh, what would cause tape deck turns way too fast. Just the pinch roller engages and before anything make sure the pinch roller engages and touches the cap stand in play mode I mean Yeah, that's way too fast. Too fast. The motor is a series of copper wire coils that are typically around three poles that will be powered to create an electromagnet. Outside of the, or on the outside of the electric motor housings are other magnets. The electromagnets are powered so as to have polarity, which repels them from magnets in the motor, causing them to spin. Got it. I um, mean, that makes sense. I, I see four coils in this. Um. Motor speed too fast, okay. Holy shit, wait a second, hold, hold the fuck up. Wait a fuck, wait, 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 wait a second. There's a knock of, this, okay. Could it possibly be that like, I'm feeding it too much power cause this is like, I don't know, not the right voltage. Like, I don't know. Like this is like a, it's like a Japanese like tape deck. 
So is there like a difference in how much power I'm putting into it? Got it. Okay. I see. I'm watching that video right now. <laughs> I'm just reading. I, now the power supply should regulate the voltage. If too much power, then that should have been broken a while ago. Fair. Oh, fuck. Nakamichi MR1 problems. Uh, okay. Take a look. No, I don't think that's it you can buy my cassette rack Hmm. <laughs> I'm Googling all these things. Uh, I think I seem to have lost my tab, though. <laughs> Retired tape head Ypsilon keyboards? What? Okay, I found that information about gears uh, for the idler, but this is still not what I'm looking for now. Okay, what if someone has mentioned here like replacing resistors? or adding resistors. But it's just weird, cause um, I don't know, it's just all, all of this just broken? <laughs> this is crazy. 
I don't think I was having this particular problem before. Did I break a resistor? sure the purpose of that rewind belt. Yeah, I'm like more confused than ever. I am pretty confused. Like his is moving with a speed that makes sense. I think. Mine is going significantly faster. So even if this motor isn't like th like the the capstan reel or whatever is not over the motor it's still going really fast. And I wonder then if that that counter like what is that counter connected to?
Yeah, because this thing is definitely not right. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm trying to think here, because... What have I really done? I just replaced two belts. Okay, this thing is still moving. And so then I'm left to wonder how how many motors are there in this? Did we did we last talk about How it looked like there were two motors here? Was that a conversation that we did have? Sinvic, did you were you the one that mentioned that? Cause I'm realizing what if it's the case that this thing that I'm turning is not even the right one? But then there's a second, like, I don't know, VR 101 or whatever for controlling speed of a different motor. One common MR1 issue is a broken pitch speed control potentiometer. Uh, the detent sensor position ought to be the correct speed. If it fails to speed up or slow as you rotate the pot, the defective control is causing your speed issue. The workaround is to leave the pitch at uh, detent and recalibrate your capstan motor speed. Yeah, so that's definitely broken. There's there's a front control for pitch. Right now, the thing is that this was working when I bought this. So that's what confuses me. Um, when I first bought this and I was trying to play tapes on it, you'd have the issue where five to nine minutes would pass and then all the tape would spill out. That was an issue, but it would play tapes fine for those five to nine minutes and this, this front potentiometer was, uh, was working properly. Um, meanwhile, there seems to be this like, this dial on the PCB, like in the back, that is also supposed to, I guess, be related to tape speed, that is also not doing anything. So um, I'm a little bit confused, to be perfectly honest. How many things have I changed? How many things have I done? Um, is, is probably a worthwhile question. Um, I replaced a belt. Um, I added a belt where I saw that the, the previous belt disintegrated. Um, one one other thing that happened is that there's this purple wire here and i'm not exactly sure we could probably find where it goes to but this purple wire here uh i guess got ripped off and i soldered it back in but i'm realizing like what if i didn't solder it in into the right place i doubt that it's wrong I just feel very doubtful because it's like it makes it only makes sense where exactly it is. <laughs> and even then, would that really be the issue? That's the crazy thing. Did you put the ground? I did put the ground back on. Darkbone Media, welcome. I can try to see to make sure. Maybe maybe it shows up in the schematic, but reading the schematic is not easy. Um, I'm trying to imagine what else could I have possibly done. 
It's unfortunate that, like, I, I didn't run a full test, um, like, just prior to me starting to, starting to work on this yesterday. I wish that I had, uh, in, in retrospect. But I didn't. Um, so there's the counter. This is sideways, but maybe there's some stuff here that I can try to pick up. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, this is kind of like a foreign language to me, just trying to like look and figure things out by reading like a schematic that looks like this. It's a little bit challenging mechanism control section. I mean, this sounds like this sounds like it's related, but I don't see. Okay. There's the pitch controller, pitch controller. And then this is a motor control circuit. I think another another super shitty part of this is that um, like the actual um, the the capstan part of this with the PCB attached I feel like is not well documented in this in the context of this manual presumably because it's like it's some kind of other standard that is not to do with Nakamichi but something that I think I guess they they bought for the purposes of this. So um, I'm not even sure if, you know, I, I don't know what I'm looking for, but at the same time, I also feel like there's a chance that whatever it would be that I'm looking for is not here. And that's what kind of sucks. Like, there's nothing here about the motor PCB. Like when we went to, you know, seven here, shows a dip side view of a printed circuit board. Let me go back to the table of contents. There's a table of contents, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anything here for, for specifically the motor PCB. So, all we can really do is just try to look up some of these photos. But um, I'm about to tap out in like, I don't know, 20-ish minutes. Stop at the five hour mark, because this is, this is kind of much. Oh, we were looking at Ypsilon, I see. This is the DR1 or DR2, which is gonna be naturally pretty different, unfortunately. Um, I think there might have been a shot in here somewhere. I don't even know if I can find it because I don't think this is even like this doesn't even look the same. The the tape transport, which sucks.
And then here's the other problem. The BX300, I think also, even in this case, um, is just, I think it's just going to look different. Um, as much as I thought it was like almost the same thing. I'm trying to find this. Okay, so there's there's this, but it's still kind of hidden. It's one of the best shots I could find of what I'm looking for. This is another one where you can just kind of see here. I think one of them is hidden. Yeah, this this sucks. There's I I swear there there must be like two motors in here, um, and none of which is like really documented. Yeah, the dual. Okay, so here's the dual drive, and then here's the control motor. So I would look at the difference between one and four. So one is this whole thing, four is this. Tanya first, my favorite, my one of my best friends. Robot University. Oh my gosh, what the hell, fuck it. Oh. Damn, this all this stuff gets lost. Oh, Frank. <laughs> who did who did that? Okay, so there's this second motor, which I guess is this guy with this little flappy piece. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Oh, this is so nuts. Hmm. 
Yeah, man. Just got me confused. Just got me very confused. Part three tomorrow? Nah. It would probably be like Sunday at the earliest, but I'm just like, I'm kind of at a loss. So, I mean, how do I put this? I didn't completely kill every single thing of this, right? Like, I was able to, to do a replacement of something. Um. But with that said, I, I feel like I may have made this worse. Okay, I think this motor is for moving, the second motor is for moving the controls. So I don't, I still think that this this part here that's moving super fast, when you post on one of those forums and uh, describe the symptoms you're experiencing, what you've done so far, photo and see if someone can offer advice. That's probably a good idea. Um, one of the things that I had uh, heard from someone else is that like, cause I haven't done this yet uh, to this point, but someone had mentioned that like, there's like a, there's like an approval process to become a member or something. So um, I, I haven't even tried, but I mean, it's uh, kind of just like a resort, I suppose. It is really weird though, right? Like I'm, I'm looking at this like, this was working before I think, you know, I'm not even sure if it was working right before I opened this up, but this was working a few weeks ago. Um, pitch control and this ability to not move this fast. Would you like me to source some parts from here? I bet I could find some. Uh, I mean, that would be cool, but I don't even know what parts I need. That's the weird thing. Like, one thing I'm just wondering is that, like, did I tug on anything? Did I, did I mess with anything while I was going through all of this? Because it's just that, like, what if there's just a chance that, like, you know, you could scour through the schematic. You could just like, you know, just try to look at every single thing. And like, maybe I just like knocked something off. Like I, I didn't even notice, like, I'm not even sure at what point, like this wire that I ripped, like I ripped this wire, this purple wire. I'm not sure when that happened. I think it happened today, <sighs> that whole thing. Um, I think it happened today and I'm not even a hundred percent sure I soldered it into the right place. I'm relatively certain but i'm not a hundred percent hold on what if is it this screw tension
No. There's no way that's it. Just kidding, but I, I guess there would be surplus here. Boy, am I confused. Oh shit, that scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I'm Pretty sure that I soldered that thing correctly. But there's just something else out there. It's just really hard to search this. Yeah, this is going like in hyper speed. poking around to see if there's anything I can find quickly. And that answer is probably no.
Head tilt, base stroke, erase head, supply tape guide, height check, height check, alignment, alignment, pressure adjustment. Hey, I guess we could look at that in this meantime. Not really. Real motor speed adjustment in play mode. Hold up, wait, 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 wait. 3.9, real motor speed adjustment in play mode. There's tape speed adjustment and then there's real motor speed adjustment. There's no figure for this. What is VR601? PC Loader, how's the tinkering going? Oh, terrible. This is like hour 11. We did six hours yesterday, five hours today. And um, I am worried that I've made this worse. Like, it's not like completely bricked, but I replaced the belts. You know, I opened it up, I replaced the belts. Um, but I, I feel like it's less functional it might actually be less functional now. Uh, Hammer the Howdy. Howdy. So where is, what is VR601? It's just nothing here. What is VR601? Is it still the tape spinning issue? Um, yeah, or the the motor is just way too fast. Um, I guess at least you have this. Yeah, these are not the most helpful. Like there, there's a chance here that like there's a version A and I have a revision B, which is supposed to be better. But like I think this manual might be for revision A. Um, and on top of that, like there's, it's really minimal in terms of what my new problem is, which is that like the motor is so fast. Like it's just, it's way too fast to, to the point where the tapes are refusing to play. Um, and you can kind of see like, it's not spilling out, but it's just doing some weird stuff like within tapes, um, before it, it just kind of stops itself. So now I'm looking at this this instruction here, 3.9. <clears throat> it says load a torque meter and set the cassette deck in play mode and then adjust VR601 on the main PCB assembly. Like this is like the, I, I don't know, this just seems like a really terrible set of instructions because um, there's a couple of these like VR, there's a VR101 here, there's a VR601 here that I don't know if they're really, let's see, oh, okay. Let's try this. Main PCB. VR601. Is that something I can find here? Where do 
I locate that? It's like, wh what am I looking for? Like, whatever the hell that is, it's like not on this PCB. It's like, okay, almost halfway between the this ledge and then this curve, almost, but not really. What the fuck am I looking for? There's like so little here that's actually helpful. Is that it? Hold up. God, why the fuck? Come on, dude. Scrolling through preview is terrible. I think I've located it. Holy shit, okay. I turned it all the way counterclockwise. I think it was counterclockwise. And now it's slower, but it's still mega fast. Like, it's still too fast. Is there a test tape? No, I don't have any test tapes, unfortunately. So, I don't know. Um, what I was mentioning, uh, PZ Load Letter and uh, Mango Header, who, Hammer Brother, whoever uh, might not have been here when I mentioned, but I'm just like, I'm wondering like if during this process, um, I may have like just, just while shifting everything around, because I don't think that this was a problem I had from before. But I'm, I'm left to wonder... If during all of this, like, did I knock something around that I wasn't supposed to, say, for example, like some resistor to make this motor not go so fast? Holy, wait, 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 wait. This is playing. Hold up. You guys hear it? Oh wait, no, I don't have anything plugged in. Wait, 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 it's actually playing right now after I slowed everything down. Sorry. Wait, 
but it's like way too fast. You hear that? It's really stupidly fast. Like, it's not supposed to sound like this, you know? Okay, so the front dial is... It does work. The front dial does work. But... I've moved it all the way to the lowest pitch. I've turned the main PCB assembly... Um like the VR601 all the way to like the slowest um, here. I think I've moved this guy within the, the motor assembly all the way clockwise as well. And it's still too fast. So now I'm wondering, okay, I just, I just stopped it, but now I'm left to wonder like, is there a chance here that the belt that I replaced in is too tight. Like, is the belt supposed to be looser? Try the caveman way, unplug and plug. Um, give me one second. I want to make sure that what's... Uh, I want to make sure that what what I've done here on the uh, the motor PCB um, is also okay. God, it's like the the way it mounts is like so crazy. I don't know. It's like there's a tightness to it that seems really unnecessary. Okay. Okay. So it says. Decrease, motor runs slowly by decreasing, moving it all the way clockwise. Now, if I go the opposite way, counterclockwise, that's probably when we'll hear it or see it super fast again. But I, I just turned it all the way counterclockwise and, and just checking to see if that's really true. That, that's the first time I've successfully been able to play this. The belt would only be slow if it was slipping. It shouldn't be a strategy for speed control. Shouldn't. But what if? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now I've moved it all the way super fast, and I can see the tape starting to go nuts. Um, so... I'm going to turn this off. Okay. So... I'm now at this point here where if I make everything, every control, as slow as possible, every single possible control is now slow as possible, which includes this VR101 on the, the motor, or yeah, VR101 on the motor PCB, the VR601 on the main PCB, and the front pitch control dial. It will actually play we are actually in a mode here where playback works, <sighs> but it's still too fast. We've actually like kind of gotten somewhere, kind of. Okay. I'm going to reset this. Found on Google. I've seen seven Nakamichi machines where the pinch roller arm bearing lubrication dries out and turns into a putty. 
that looks like contact cement. When this happens, the rubber pinch roller never really comes in contact with the cap stand, and it's just the take up drive that's speeding the tape along. You have to very you have to be very careful to clean out the old lubricant, especially since some arms may have tape guides on them and will affect the tape path alignment. Um pinch roller arm <laughs> the rubber thing that pushes on the capstan I have no idea um I want to play this really, really fast, and I want to see if it at any point eats the tape. Because I'm wondering if the belt replacement actually fixed that problem, and now we're just like stupid fast. I'm going to go wash my hands. Um, yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, I want to see if, like, like, we've already played, I don't even know how long, but if we can get to, like, 10 minutes from now, 10.28, for example, like, California time, then like I would call this like a very very minor success <laughs> a very minor success um, but obviously there's this problem where everything's like way too fast so I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna think about it too so I did clean, I did clean this. I guess the take up motor just pulls as fast as it can and the cap stand is what regulates speed. <laughs> like the thing though is that it's all just really fast. like. Everything is just so fast. <laughs> like, like, um... Hold on. Give me one second. I'm trying to, like, get my eyes in view in seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Was it just me or did it get slower? I can't tell. I don't think it got slower. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think it regulated itself. Um, is the tape slipping past the cap stand? I, I don't see that happening. And I mean, it's playing back fine. And I want to see if we can make it further than the, the five to nine minutes. So if we make it past the nine minutes that we were getting from before, I would call that like a, a relative win, aside from the fact that everything's too fast. Yeah, there's no way this... This is normal speed. <laughs> um, <sighs> Pinch roller arm bearing lubrication dries out and turns into a putty that looks like contact cement. When this happens, the rubber pinch roller never really comes in contact with the capstan. It's just the take up drive that is speeding the tape along. So I'm I, like the potential for speed control might be bad. So so that was mentioned a little bit earlier too. It's not, it's not at this at this stage. It's not because um, it actually will go faster if I turn it up. Like 
it's still going like all the way left is the slowest and all the way right is the fastest, but the slowest is still too fast. <laughs> so I, I don't think it's that at this point, at this point. I'd like to be proven wrong. Did you measure the resistance? Uh, do you mean like the actual physical resistance or like the electrical resistance? <laughs> like, like, like me touching it or? <laughs> With a meter. Oh no, I, I haven't. Like I that's that's the other thing, is that like someone someone has mentioned that like, you know, if the motor is going too fast, because like that's what it seems like. The motor's just going crazy fast, even when I dial everything down for all the things that allow me to dial it down with like a, a screwdriver with my fingers. Um I think that there was some mention that like, hey, like there could be something about resistors not happening correctly, or <laughs> Someone just mentioned, you might just need to throw in more resistors. <laughs> um, I'm going to go grab uh, some crackers because I'm pretty hungry. You'd have to look at the circuit on how it regulates. This is so fast. Ah, bro. Yeah, I don't think that was the end of it. Oh uh, yeah, okay. So the tape didn't like spill out, but um, it looked like it began to not do the right thing. Yeah, I honestly think we're like kind of back at square one. I'm surprised here. It actually played again when I threw it back in. I was anticipating it would stop. I'm gonna keep hitting play and see if it's gonna start to spill out. I think it did. I think it just started. No, it still didn't. But I wanna get it to. <laughs> Gotta go and grab food. Hey, Zero, thanks so much. Yeah, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna be ending pretty soon. Okay, um, yeah. I can see there's there's a lot of funky stuff going on in there.
All right, I'm going to look at this diagram again. In the 40s range, I'm just curious. 44 is a spring, 45 is a collar, 46 is a tension arm, that makes sense. Forty seven is the pulley, and forty eight is the belt. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of like left to be really confused here. I, I'm uh, this is rather unfortunate. Approaching twelve hours now. And um yeah, I think at this stage we've made this worse. <laughs> Which is really sad. Yeah, it's refusing to rewind at this point. I think there could be potentially something about what there's not nothing is in here really you're choosing to do that even with no tape in here Then, okay, then there's, like, got to be something with this, like, take-up motor. And and that's the other thing, too, is that, like, is there is there a separate take-up motor? Like, is that actually a thing? There's a reason why I ask it. Because I can get the 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 black, I don't know, the black capstan to stop. But then this continues moving when I when I hit play. So that's not powered by the black capstan, but I'm just like, well, what is this powered by? What is this powered by and then how can I control that? So part of me thought it was this guy because this is called a control motor. But I'm not sure because I think that all that does is control like the different, I'm guessing these are heads. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. All right, for anyone who's just uh, tuned in or might have missed it from earlier, there is one other thing, which is that um, uh, there's a, a solder, there's a solder point here um, on what I guess to these heads. Maybe I'll look that up. I realize um, it's 29. 29 is mode switch. So yeah, um, connected to the mode switch are just wires that like shielded wires that you could solder onto them. And one of them actually ripped off earlier, and I'm pretty sure I soldered it back in into the right spot. But I just feel like I have to mention that. Um,
I wonder if I just completely leave this PCB attached and the, the dual capstan is like not even there, what happens when I start playing a tape? There is some refusal to. Why is that? Why does it refuse to? Also, where the hell did that other tape go? Oh man, I think this Keith sweat tape is totally ruined. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that doesn't look good. All right. Not dealing with that Keith sweat tape. Not now. Charles. Refusal. Hmm. Yet somehow it will opt to play when there's no cassette in. Okay, when I reattach the PCB, is there some kind of checker to make sure? I feel like there is possibly something to that whole, like, the pinch roller comment.
Lubrication dries out and turns into a putty that looks like contact cement. Now, I haven't seen that. N not as far as I have seen. But, um... Pinch roller arm. Let me... Let me look through this real quickly and see if I can determine anything. Twenty seven, twenty eight, thirty nine, forty. Hmm. Duh, 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 duh. Um. A few things I want to look at over here. So that's 27, 28. Um, and those were the things I was looking at these arm assemblies. 32. Head base spring. Oh my god. Yeah, I feel like, okay, might, might just be a way to adjust the pin troller so it pushes harder on the capstan and grips the tape tighter. So, okay, so the funny thing about that is that there's actually this, this instruction for that. Pressure adjustment of the take up pressure roller. The problem is that like this, the instructions are actually really vague and the diagram is it doesn't match. Like it's just this is not what this looks like. And and this is one of those other things where I'm just like is this one of those like um version A versus version B problems. So um I'll get some music back on. Um, let me let me pull out these um, this faceplate. Take out these screws. Then I'll pull out the faceplate. Cause then I'll be able to get a closer look at this for sure. Yeah, like the construction of this is just different than this diagram. 
And it, it's like, it's also telling you to check the torque, which like, I really don't know what that means and how to do that. Cause like, like if you just look at this diagram, what, what are you checking torque for? Like what torque is being checked? Like it's not of a screw. Okay, then meanwhile, I mean, maybe there's just something else that has to do with like pushing harder on the capstan and gripping the tape tighter. It could be like um, playback head tilt. You're checking how much tor torque the reel is putting on the tape. Okay, uh, let me let me come back to that. I want to read this real quick. I, I will I will come back to that though. Boy, preview really sucks. Okay. Um, so there's this diagram here for... Like height gears? RH and PH? What is RH and PH? Oh, playback head and record head. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know if like I've knocked this and if this like causes a big difference. Head probably not your issue right now. Okay. That's fair. Okay. Um, I did want to look at this motherfucker. This thing, I swear to God. So this is tape guide height check. Supply tape guide height check. So refer, refer to figure 3.3. It says, um, load a tape guide height check gauge S in the cassette deck. Set the cassette deck in play mode. Set the take up tape guide check bar down against the take up tape guide good lord that is very very confusing check to ensure that the take up tape guide check bar is accepted by the take up tape guide oh my god what a nightmare okay you're checking how much torque uh the reel is putting on the tape okay so going back to that then um if we're talking about uh, specifically the pressure adjustment of the take-up pressure roller, um, um, what, 
what am I, I'm still confused as to what I'm checking in the context of this diagram. Take a pressure roller. It's the only one with a spring. Right, so okay, so then I'm, I'm back to this question that I had from a little bit earlier, which was, I, I don't even know what adjustment I could possibly make, because again, this diagram is not accurate. There's only one hole here. This is actually like, it's not horizontal, it's vertical, and there's only one spring. Like, and it's just, there's nothing in here that would indicate that like, this is this is what we need. Nor is there anything to indicate like what what is it asking you to change? It says correct it. If torque is out of the range, correct it by changing the insulation point of the pressure roller spring. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so I've just realized So um, I've just realized something so just imagine The insulation point suggests there might be multiple holes for the spring to go and apply different forces. No, there's only one hole, but I've literally just realized it, this was not obvious the first time. So imagine, okay, um, I, I was I was pointing this out a little bit earlier. The, the rotation of this diagram is really bad. So like if I take this screenshot, um, and then I'll just, I'll rotate this solely. This is what it really looks like. This is the top. And then this, this roller wheel is at the bottom. And then here's this, right? I guess the same thing we already looked. So here, here's the crazy thing. Okay, just imagine that this diagram was correct because this diagram does not correspond to what I have. Right here, this is horizontal in this diagram. This is supposed to be vertical, one hole. At the bottom right here, only one hole, only one spring. So there's a, there's a vertical plate here that has a hole in it that the spring hook, the one spring hooks into. At the bottom, there's this hole, horizontal, uh, rightfully so, but only one of them that the spring hooks onto down there. Now, the one thing I just noticed is that the hole right here is not like it's, there's one hole, well, exactly one hole, but that one hole is not hollowed out. It looks like the spring is like glued. The spring, like that hole is like a translucent, like yellowish brown and you, you're, finger like no solid can go through it unless I like try to break this what I imagine is some kind of putty or glue um, that's the weird thing I, I have just noticed now you say maybe you can adjust the arm the spring can hooks onto um, no the arm is pretty stationary unfortunately So I, I'm very curious if what it's saying is corrected by changing the installation point of the pressure roller spring. Is that like within this weird puttied or glued hole, am I supposed to break it, stretch out the spring more and then re-putty it in place? Cause like that's the only possible thing I could think of that makes any sense here. In which case it's that like, this is like, that is such a goofy thing to do. And again, whether or not that's the case, this is like just incredibly unclear. Change the installation point. Like, yeah, that is not helpful. Same goes for the one like on the supply reel, but it's like a much shorter spring and, and also not really relevant.
Okay, I'm approaching on 549. I'm probably not going to run a giveaway again today. <laughs> it's just because it's too late. Unless you guys really need a giveaway. But um, I would rather prefer to perform a giveaway when this is done or just this is not the project for the night. But approaching on six hours, I'm, I'm probably going to stop very, very soon just because I don't want to hit the six hour mark. I'm going to take another look down here and just try to determine what that could possibly mean when it says change the installation point. The bottom part is almost like puttied too or glued in. Like that spring is just like it's puttied on both sides. So I, I really don't know how to adjust, like, again, it, like this has to be it corresponding uh, PC leveler to what your suggestion was. Pressure adjustment of the take up pressure roller is the same thing as might be a way to adjust the pinch roller so it pushes harder on the cap stand. Um, you're right, I just, I don't know. All right, here's a thought I had, and this is the last thing I'm gonna try. Um, I'm going to play um, Ray Charles again before I give up. I'm going to play Ray Charles. I'm going to stop the current music. We're going to press play. If I just push up harder. Yeah, no, I think, do you hear that? Like it slowed down? I'm just pushing it up with my finger. Okay, but then it like, it decides to fail. Yeah, I mean like, I had the tape slip out. <laughs> it's just like refusing. It's refusing to, like I, I pushed it, I pushed it up and then like I think it slips out. So it's like, I mean, I can't just do this with my fingers. <laughs> Cause then it like, it just, it goes really awry. Oh, so those are all, all kinds of problems right now. Um, I mean, it'll slow down the more pressure I put on it. So, I mean, that, that stopped because I wanted it to, but I don't know. Um, that's that's kind of the only thing, I mean, 
<laughs> it's uh I, I don't know that the belt was ever the problem it might have been but um this this whole thing about the pressure adjustment of the take up pressure roller is is i guess also going to be problematic here all right um i'm gonna just take a look and see who's on it looks like joran's on should we go raid joran Rumi's on as well triggity a few folks on tonight yeah uh just more to think about i think more to think about down the line uh I, I I gotta take some time to think. I, I didn't realize I'd take six hours on this, um, but also I think I just I need to pause and just call it a, a week here. <laughs> uh, taking a look and seeing what's going on with everybody. Rumi has the least amount of time. Or she's been streaming the least. All right, you, uh, what do you guys think? Should I raid Rumi? Jorn? Maybe we'll raid Jorn. Yeah, let's raid Jorn. All right, guys. We're back at it again, y'all. <laughs> we're done tonight. I, uh, Yeah, we got problems, but uh, <laughs> we're good. Did you order the plates? I did not order the plates. So it's probably going to be next week. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Peace, guys. Uh, show Jordan some love. Uh, probably do a keyboard build next time around. Um, I, I'm probably going to rebuild this and uh, just stow this away at some point. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, guys. Um, good night. See you next week.